Folks, let's face it, Python is slow. Let's speed it up with Rust, a language that has a reputation for being blazingly fast. So folks, uh, with Python developers and Python development, we're always trying to get around the fact that Python is very slow. And there's many different ways to go about doing it. Speeding up Python is a very broad discussion topic. But one such common way of speeding up Python is actually taking some of the code that you would otherwise write in Python and write it in a low-level language like the C languages, which is very commonly seen with NumPy, a very popular Python module. Then you would compile that code and then bring that code back into Python via a Python library. The problem with doing this in the C languages that I found in my experience is that it's not necessarily straightforward and it's not really easy to do. Rust, however, has a reputation for being blazingly fast to the point where that reputation is pretty much meme-like at this point in time. But we can use a Rust crate called PyO3 and a tool called Matterin to very easily prepare our Rust code for compilation into a Python module and then very easily bring that module back into our Python projects. And that is what I want to highlight in this particular video. I want to show you the significant performance improvements that you will see from Rust, but I also want to highlight how simple and easy PyO3 and Matterin make this. Now, just as a quick warning, if you do not know how to write Rust code, this is not the video for you. I highly recommend that you stick around and maybe see how simple and easy of a process this is and the performance improvements that we see, but ultimately you're going to need to learn how to write Rust if you want to do any of this. Additionally, this isn't really going to be a rigorous tutorial on how to use PyO3 or Matterin. I'm just going to go through a general, uh, simple uh, use case, and that's kind of it. To showcase the performance improvements we'll see with Rust, I decided to write uh, some very, very simple code exploring random number generators. Now, I'm not exploring the algorithms on the back end, so keep that in mind when I'm running all these tests, as we might be using a very inefficient algorithm. But I decided to test Python's standard random library and its random integer generating function, uh, and compared that to NumPy's random uh, integer generating function. And then I also wrote this. Here you can see I have a very simple two-line function right here where we are generating an 8-bit integer between our lower bound and higher bounds that we're setting. And we're using 8-bit integers here uh, because I'm using very, very small integers. And I'll touch on that in a moment. But then we just have this OK statement that is returning our 8-bit integer. But one of the things that we end up doing here is we decorate this function with a pi function decorator. That comes from PyO3, which is a package that we've imported here, or our crate that we've imported. This decorator is very simple, but we can't just import a standalone Python function. We have to import a module, and then we can call that module, we can call the different functions in that module. So we create this second function right here, and we decorate it with a pi module decorator. So the compiler knows that, hey, this is the module that we're creating. I'm calling this module Rust Rand. And then all we're doing right here is we're just adding our function. This is really simple and easy because you don't have to do anything super special other than make one additional simple function and then just use a couple of different decorators. And that's the ease of using PyO3. But then how do we actually compile this and bring it back into our Python project? Here we have the directory structure for this project, which you can see I'm calling this project how random. I'm using poetry to manage dependencies and stuff like that. But then over here, you can see we have our how random file. We have our init.py file, but then we have all of the Rust stuff that we would need. You have the source directory, your cargo lock file, and your cargo toml file, which is something that you're going to need or be used to if you're writing in Rust. One thing I should mention is that instead of a main.rs uh, file, you will have a lib.rs file. Now to compile this and bring this into Python, all we need to do is first pip install Matterin, or if you're using Poetry, you can, uh, you know, Poetry add uh, Matterin as a development dependency. Then we can navigate our way to our to the directory containing our cargo.toml and cargo.lock files, and then just run Matterin develop, and you can use the release flag if you want release level performance from the package, which I highly recommend. Then in our Python code, or particularly our howrandom.py file here, we can just go ahead and import RustRand. Then we can call the function we created to generate the random numbers. So, 
We're comparing Python's standard random library, NumPy's random integer generating function, and this custom one that I've written in Rust. How exactly are we testing this though? Well, I'm running a very simple test here. We're generating different amounts of random integers between one and 10, storing them into different types of arrays, and I'm recording the runtime. For most of these tests, I started off by generating 10 random integers between one and 10 and recorded the runtime in order to do it. We did this all the way up to 100,000 random integers uh, at an interval of 10 integers every single test. Note that we did do a test at a much larger scale, but we'll get to that later on. Let's take a look at our first test here using Python lists. You can see that somehow NumPy is the slowest, which is by far uh, the most surprising to me considering a lot of its backend is written in C. NumPy took a little more than 700 milliseconds to generate 100,000 random integers and store them into a Python list. By the way, that's just for 100,000 random integers. That's just for the last test. This isn't cumulative runtime. This is just one time for the last test. While Python took just under 200 milliseconds and Rust took just over 110 milliseconds, making it by far the fastest. This is more than six and a quarter times faster than NumPy and almost one and three quarters times faster than Python and the standard random library. Now I know what you might be saying, using Python lists and appending isn't necessarily the fastest. And you're absolutely right by thinking about that. Not to mention that NumPy was performing really poorly. Maybe NumPy would perform better if we used some type of NumPy array. So what I ended up doing in the second test is using the NumPy zeros function to generate an array of zeros. And then we could go through and change each value uh, of the array as we go along depending on the amount of random numbers we're generating. Here we can see again, NumPy is the slowest, to my surprise again, taking even slower at just over 750 milliseconds to generate 100,000 random integers between one and 10 and store them in a NumPy array. Python still in second place here at 194 milliseconds, just a little bit more than that actually. And then Rust even saw a minor performance improvement using NumPy arrays, taking just under 110 milliseconds to generate 100,000 random integers between 1 and 10, and store them in the NumPy array. Here we see just under 7 times performance improvements with Rust compared to NumPy. We're still hovering around 1 and a quarter times better performance improvements with compared to Python and its standard random library. Now, in all honesty, Python isn't looking that slow here compared to NumPy, which is, again, very, very surprising to me. But we can even make Rust faster here, which is something that many of you are probably taking a look at or thinking already. Here with the code from before, I've added in another function. And this function, of course, I am decorating with this pi function decorator to denote that it's a new Python function. And I'm calling it randopt for optimized uh, randomness, I guess, but it's pretty much the same exact thing. The only thing that we're doing now is we are returning a Rust vector. With this function, what we're doing is we are generating different amounts of random integers again, but we're handling all of the array stuff on the back end with Rust vectors. With the fill method, we are filling a vector with zeros and changing all the values as we go along. Uh, you can see that right here with this line of code. Otherwise, nothing's really changing. And we're also testing just an empty vector and then pushing to that vector, kind of like appending to a Python list. Then all we need to do is we are just returning our Rust vector. So everything's being handled on the back end in Rust. So then the simple thing here is that all we need to do is add addition, an additional line to our Python module function right here, our Rust and Python module, to add this new function to our module. So you can see that coding up new functions and adding them to our modules is a really, really simple, easy, and straightforward task. There's not a lot going on with it because all we need to worry about is one additional line of code and a new decorator on our function. We also need to worry about just setting the return type to being a Python result, but that's really simple. It's, then we can just run the same commands as we did before with matter and develop and everything will be pulled right back in. And so these are all of the Rust results compared to one another. The Python and NumPy arrays are kind of right around where we would expect them. Again, we saw marginal performance improvements with NumPy arrays, uh, but we're hovering just around 110 milliseconds to generate 100,000 random integers between 1 and 10. 
But by pushing to an empty Rust vector, again comparing this to appending with Python lists, we see significant performance improvements by handling all of this on the back end in Rust. Now obviously filling the vector and changing the values as we go along is a little bit faster at about a tenth of a millisecond faster, but you can still see the level of performance improvements we're seeing here by using the Rust vectors on the back end. This is 3.4 times faster than Python lists and 3.34 times faster than the NumPy arrays. Now, if you're worried about not testing to see whether or not stuff is pretty much linear, I tested this out for 2 million random integers between 1 and 10 being generated, and you can see we're seeing pretty, pretty uh, consistent linear behavior right here. But it just further magnifies how much faster or how much better performance you're going to see with using Rust vectors. With the NumPy arrays, it took about uh, just under 2.1 seconds. With Python lists, that actually somehow improved compared to before, so that's a little bit interesting. But using Rust vectors on the back end, particularly the filled uh, Rust vector, and then changing the values as we go along, since we saw that one to be faster, we see uh, a little bit more than half a second uh, to generate 2 million random integers between 1 and 10 and store them in the array. And we also see very, very consistent 3.5 to 3.6 times speed up by using Rust and Rust vectors on the back end. And so hopefully you're seeing right now the level of performance improvements that we can get by writing just a little bit of Rust code. Again, this is very, very simple. We're talking random number generation. But you're going to be able to write custom functions in Rust and see significantly better performance improvements by just importing that module you've written yourself and using that function exactly how you want. And by the way, we haven't even gotten into multi-processing and multi-threading, which from experience I can tell you is much better in Rust compared to Python. I could do a whole video on that if you want to see that. But being able to use PyO3 and Matterin to very, very simply and easily write Python modules in Rust and bring them into your Python projects is a very powerful tool. This is going to be your own custom code that you know exactly the ins and outs of, and you're going to be able to see exactly what's going on with it. And that's very powerful. Now this brings us to the last test where we actually see performance improvements with NumPy compared to Rust and the Rust vectors on the back end. If we pass in an additional parameter to this NumPy function, we will generate an array of random integers all in one step, kind of like what we're doing on the back end in Rust. Now with Rust, remember, the best result that we ended up seeing for generating 100,000 random integers between 1 and 10 was a little more than 32 milliseconds. But with NumPy, that falls to just 5 and a quarter milliseconds, which is significantly better performance. But that's the added benefit of you writing your own custom backend code. This is just me messing with testing random number generators for the sake of writing something that I thought would be really simple that honestly isn't, considering the fact that I didn't consider any of the backend random number generating algorithms. But what's the moral of the story here? One, either read the documentation really, really well for using someone else's functions, and you might see a better performance improvement, but you're going to have to do those experiments on your own. Or you can write your own custom functions, know exactly what they're doing, compile them, and bring them into your Python projects really, really simply to take advantage of Rust's blazingly fast speed and get better performance improvements in Python. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you want to see more things related to Rust or Python, consider letting me know in the comment section down below, and I hope to see you again next time.